Hey you, what up? Welcome to my channel, welcome back, I'm Miriam. Spring is right around the corner. I am in much better spirits than in my previous video. And today, I am going to be testing out a whole lot of new makeup. We are going to be seeing what is new in makeup for the month of March. I have lots of goodies in front of me from Makeup by Mario, to Milani, to Huda Beauty, to Iconic London, to Sigma, to Physicians Formula, to Lancome, to Maybelline, basically everything. A little bit of high end, a little bit of drugstore. And as I always do with these videos, I like to test out all the products on my face to create a look. I never know where the look is going. I usually allow the products to speak to me. And today, this is the look that I came up with by listening to the products and letting them speak to me. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Subscribe if you aren't already, hit that notification bell so you can watch all of my videos. And now let's get into it. What's new in makeup for the month of March? Here we come. All right, we've got boxes and packages and PR boxes galore all in front of me. I have a lot of products that I wanna test out today. So first, I'm gonna go for this Bobbi Brown PR package. In it, we have my favorite Skin Long Wear Weightless Foundation and also the primer that Bobbi Brown is so known for. It is their Vitamin Enriched Face Base. This is not a new product by any means, but I have a new batch, so I might as well just test it out. I'm gonna use one of these types of brushes. This one is from Too Faced, but I like it for cream products. I'm just gonna literally dip my brush in there. I'm gonna apply this product to my face. So what this face base is reminding me of is actually just a moisturizer, just like a very emollient type of base for the face that makeup artists like to use. Because a lot of makeup artists, believe it or not, don't actually believe in primers. I was actually just on a Zoom call with Makeup by Mario for a new product that he is launching that will be featured in this video. And somehow the conversation went into primers and bases and he was saying that he is not a primer believer, that he in fact just believes in moisturizing and prepping the skin. But in his opinion, he feels that a lot of foundation sits kind of on top of the primer and he doesn't like the fact that it doesn't become one with the skin. So I kind of took that to heart because I am a believer in primers, especially because I am so oily and I I need something to mattify my skin before I can actually apply foundation. But at the same token, there's really only two primers that I like out of the millions of primers that are out there. So I don't know, maybe he's right. Maybe I'm right too, maybe we're both right. But anyway, face base is what I'm using today. Definitely has a sticky feeling, just like most moisturizers, definitely feels very hydrating on the skin. In my monitor, I'm seeing that my skin is a little bit more perfected now. Not like it is perfected with my essence tinted primer. That one is a perfect match for me. Okay, for foundation, you guys, not a new foundation, but I am still testing out Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Serum Foundation that I didn't initially love because it felt very heavy and kind of greasy on my skin. But then after publishing my video, after speaking with a lot of you, after speaking directly with Danessa, I realized that I was using way too much product. So now I'm gonna use just as much product as is intended which is literally a drop for your entire face. Also, I realized that I'm kind of in between shades. So I've been mixing 7N and 9N because there isn't an 8N, there's actually an 8P, but these undertones suit me, the neutral N undertones. So I'm just gonna mix those two on the back of my hand, the tiniest amount, like that, and then I'm gonna apply that in a dotting method to my face. Once I've done that, I'm gonna grab my Lawless Foundation Brush. I really like this one, it's very, very fluffy. And I'm gonna blend everything out. It does give me a very sheer type of coverage, but I can see that this could be buildable. I'm gonna build on top of it. I feel like for my forehead, this is the perfect amount of coverage. I don't need any more, I don't need any less. This is just right. But then for some of these areas here where I have some of my dark spots, some of my acne scars, I feel like a little bit more coverage could be needed. So I'm just gonna dip a little bit of the brush into this mixture, stippling motions. Also bring it down my neck. I feel like that's enough. Still a wee bit sticky for me, just a pinch sticky, but I feel like with powder, I can take care of that. All right, moving right along to, I'm gonna cover up this guy right here. I'm gonna use my Lancome Tant Adult Ultra Wear All Over Concealer. This one is one of my faves, especially for spot treating. The shade is a pinch light for me, but I'll get away with it. Just gonna conceal a couple of spots here and there. 
Okay, next, we've got a package from Sigma. And in this package, we have some new products. We have the Neutralize Discoloration Blur Imperfections and Brighten Your Complexion products. Looks like these are color correcting duos or like creamy concealer duos. So they have them in three different shades, the light to medium, the medium to dark, and the dark to deep. Also, we've got two brushes in here and a beaming glow illuminating powder right here. But it actually looks very, very luminous in the packaging, so I don't know, I'm a little afraid. So let's see, basically, these are creams that you can mix together to customize your shade and layer under concealer. So it, essentially, it's exactly what I thought. It's a color corrector in a cream format. So what I'm gonna do is use the light to medium. Both of the shades have a very pinky undertone, like very pinky. I'm gonna just uh, layer that underneath my under eye. This feels very, very sticky and very balmy, uh, but it's definitely doing something. It's definitely brightening. The good thing about this product is that it does feel pretty lightweight. So even though it's balmy, even though there's like some greasy, oily feeling in between my fingers, it feels kind of nice on the under eye. I feel like that was really easy and really pretty. I like the result. All right, Sigma. Next thing I'm gonna do is use this little Pat McGrath brush and blend out my Lancome concealer because I feel like it's been sitting on my face for a hot minute now. People still say hot minute or just me? Just me? Thought so. And I love this concealer. It is so, so good. It goes on as a liquid, but blends out like a cream. And it almost has a liquid to powder finish. So it doesn't disrupt or move your foundation underneath. Highly recommend this one for spots. It's also good for the under eye, but for spots, this is my favorite one. Again, not a new product. Something that I've tested out, have put in my time and research. I've worn it out a lot and I like it a lot. Although this spot right here could probably use an exact shade match. Can you even see it? I feel like I can see it. Ooh, okay, let's leave that alone. All right, so now for the under eye, I have a new product from Huda. I actually have a couple of products from Huda. I believe this one here is it. All of her PR packages come in these really cute, handy little Ziploc bags with air bubbles that are in the shape of a heart. And I'm kind of obsessed with them. I love to travel with them. I love to like, keep my toothbrush, my toothpaste, my floss, like my toiletries in these. They're so, so good. I never get rid of them. Anyway, Huda Beauty has a new product and it's called the Cherry Blossom Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder. It's a pink addition to her Easy Bake Setting Powders. Ooh, cat hair. Meow. Same packaging as before. Very floral scent, very floral, but I like the scent, so <laughs> I'm not gonna complain about it. I'm one of those people who only likes fragrance if it's a nice scent. If it's not a nice scent, then I'm like, oh, it's fragrant, it's too much, you know? But if it's a scent I like, then I'm like, oh, it's so pretty and fruity, I love it. So that's how I feel about this one. All right, so I'm gonna use my Charlotte T brush. Oh wait, hold on, rewind, BRB, hold on, before I set my under eye, I was actually supposed to put some concealer on top of this brightener. And I have a concealer that I wanna test out on camera. Thank you, Tisha, for sending me some brighter shades of LYS Triple Fix Full Coverage Brightening Concealer. I wanted to brighten and I got some brighter shades. So I think the shade that I'm gonna go for is MN1. Or maybe I should go for like MP3, MP3. <laughs> MP3 stands for medium pink three. And typically I am an MG5 in LYS's foundations and concealers. So maybe the pinky concealer will be a little bit more brightening on me. Let's see. So I really do like a pinkier under eye. I think this is more of a skin matching shade for me, even though it's pink. So let me go with the MN1. Yeah, this one's gonna be great. Okay, perfect. This is gonna be my brightening under eye shade. So now, I'm gonna grab a brush like this. This is one is from Sephora, Blending Concealer Brush. First, I'm gonna blend these two shades together. I'm gonna lift that outer corner up, up, up. Oh, that is so lovely. I knew I liked this concealer. I just needed to get my shade. We're working hard for this under eye today. We're brightening, we're concealing, we are lifting. We're adding various textures here. Wow. And now we're going to set. Again, using this pinky powder from Huda. I'm just gonna stick that right in there. Oh yeah. That is incredible. That is the eye brightening shade that I needed in my life. Wow, that is literally amazing. 
Typically not a fan of this Easy Bake Powder, possibly because I couldn't find the right shade. The lightest one had this graying type of effect on my skin, and then all the other shades were just not quite right, or like not translucent enough. But this one, strictly for the under eye, is literally perfect. That under eye is smooth, it looks natural, it looks bright, it looks really good up close, it looks really good in my monitor, thus it looks good on camera. That was uh, pretty impressive, at first impression that is. All right, I'm not gonna set the rest of my face with this just because I know this formula and I'm not like super compatible with this formula when worn all over the face, but for the under eye, I think this is a good match for me. So for the rest of the face, I'm just gonna use my Charlotte T. Again, I wanna test this foundation with powders that I typically love. So this is a powder that I typically love and I'm gonna continue to love it. Using this refer brush, 05, just gonna seal in the pores and then gently dust everywhere else. Same thing here, sealing in and closing the pores and then gently dusting everywhere else. Damn it, I just applied powder and I had a cream blush to test out. Also from Huda, never mind. All right, just gonna set my forehead real quick. And I had it written down, like literally this was in my notes. I had under eye powder, then I had blush. It's just like not intuitive for me to use cream blush because I always like to set my foundation immediately. I don't like to let it sit on my face because of cat hair. I just don't like the sticky wet feeling on my face. But anyway, I forgot all about the blush. Sorry about that. I do believe we have an alternative though. So from Iconic London, we've got these two palettes and I believe these are duos. Okay, so we have these beautiful duos. These are called Silk Glow Duos. This one is in the shade Rose Glow and we also have Coral Glow. Coral Glow stunning. This would be my summer shade. I really like the highlight on this and the packaging is gorgeous. Let's try that out. For the sake of today, I'm gonna go for the Rose Glow just because I think it'll go better with my lavender top. I'm gonna grab this big ice cream shaped brush. This one is from Tarte. It's very old, but I like it because it's huge and it's like the size of my cheek. So that's what I like for blush. I'm gonna dip right into this Iconic London blush. Fully picks up some product. All right, that did it. I kind of scratched the surface with the bristles and then it seemed to have picked up product, but it wasn't like super easy off the bat. Color is really pretty, very dainty, very light. I definitely need to like double, triple, quadruple dip, but I like the effect. Let's see this up close. So there's definitely a little bit of luminosity with this blush. I wouldn't call it glitter, but there are very fine specks of shimmer. This reminds me of something. I think it was like Becca x Chrissy Teigen. It's definitely giving me a little bit of nostalgia, makeup nostalgia. Okay, I mean, I like it. I'm not obsessed, but it's good. It's good. So while we're at it, let me go ahead and try out this highlighter. Let's see what brushes I have here. I'm gonna go for this brush here. It is from Chikohoto. It is pricey. It is available on Beautylish. I will link it because a lot of people ask me about this brush. Oh yeah. Okay, I quite like the highlighter. It is thinner than those highlighters of 2017, but it's still beaming enough while being a little bit more skin perfecting, a little bit more like texture friendly. I feel like a lot of people have steered away from powder highlighter in recent years, just because it seems to emphasize your texture on your cheekbones, especially when you smile and you crinkle your eyes here. If you have crow's feet, let's face it, a powder highlighter is just not your friend. But this one seems to be very mild. I like it. All right, what else we got? We've got Physician's Formula Bread and Butter Collection. Okay, cool. In it, we've got some glosses and we also have, looks like a shimmery bronzer. All right, we also have a blush here. Looks like cute little strawberries imprinted. And these bronzers are like actually in the print of bread. So that's making me very hungry. Thanks, Physician's Formula. Don't do this to me. I'm gonna need a cookie or something. Also, I gotta say, all the Physician's Formula products are very scented. And here's the difference. These scents are a little bit too food-like. So for me, it's almost a little bit on the bothersome side. This one I can tell smells like strawberries, but it's not like real strawberries. It's like that fake strawberry scent. Whereas this definitely has like some sort of a buttery, some sort of food remedy and smell that, I don't know, I just can't get behind. It's just not quite food-like. It's not really like making me hungry, but I also don't want to smell like it. I don't know, it's weird. So let's see, we've got the baked and we've got the toasty. Honestly, I can't even tell which one's the lighter, which one's the darker. I'm gonna go for baked first, see what that looks like, and then maybe go for toasty. Wayne Gloss number 12 bronzer brush. 
very powdery, very pigmented. There's a shimmer there, but not too bad. Not too bad at all. You can definitely see the product applying. And the shade is pretty good. Also, there's some shimmer, there's some luminosity to this, but not overly metallic, and also not overly orange, so I like that. So I guess this, sh this shade, Baked, is up my alley. Not bad, bread and butter. Let's see, I'm gonna try this shade. Again, it's it, kind of like a weird formulation, almost like, you need to pick up and then tap off because the first initial swipe is a swipe, like you see it. And now I feel like I have a very baked forehead. Maybe a little too much. Maybe I didn't need to apply that second shade. But let's see, maybe I can buff that out. I mm, feel like I messed that up. Now my forehead's looking a little patchy right here specifically. It's just uh, a little dirty looking, like I dirtied up my skin. I feel like that was my fault though. Let's move on. Ah yes, we have some eyeshadow palettes. I am going to prime my eyes with my fancy, my little mini travel size eye primer. Look, like it's been a minute since I've reached for you. There's just been no need for eye primers. And now for the eyes, I have a massive, beautiful PR package from Milani. It matches my whole vibe today, so I like that. Also, it's telling me that spring is right around the corner and I'm happy about that because I do not love the winter. Looks like we've got some lip colors, some glosses, some lipsticks on this top tray here. And on the second tray here, we have an eyeshadow palette and also some eye crayons, some lashes. Oh, that's pretty. A setting spray, a lip balm, and finally, the eyeshadow palette. So this one is called Gilded Flora. So cute. Wow, this is speaking to me. But hold on, before we move on, there's a third tray in here. And looks like this third tray has another palette. But this one might be a face palette. Two blushes, a bronzer, a highlighter, and three eyeshadows. This looks a little too nighttime appropriate for me, so I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna go for this Gilded Flora, since it's speaking to me. I really like the color story. This is what I look for in spring shades. I want them to be bright, but pastel-y, but not chalky. I want there to be a good mix between shimmery shades and matte shades. And of course, I also want transition shades. Isn't this cute? I mean, I'm really liking this whole vibe here. All of this, this whole section is just like so, so vibrant. And I really like the neutrals. Oh, I hope the quality is nice. Dip into this one right here, Lavender Fields. Tap some off. And I'm gonna apply some of that to my eye socket. So first, I'm just going in rough. Okay, okay. I don't see this shade working for everyone. I'm pretty sure if you're more than like two shades darker than me, it will start to look a little too chalky on you. But if you're like me or lighter, this shade will work. It's not super pigmented, but it's definitely buildable, which is nice. And you can definitely achieve a nice wash of color with this type of shade. But the shadow, what I do like about it is that it is very soft and easy to blend out. What I don't like is when Eyeshadows that are not super pigmented are very hard, like very dry and difficult to blend out, which ends up causing a lot of patchiness, but this is not the case here. This is lightly pigmented, but it's so soft. I mean, that looks really pretty. I am getting 2000s vibes all the way with this shade. I'm thinking I might need to add a little bit to my lower lash line just because Mandy Moore from 2002 vibe. This first step, I really like. Next. Let's keep it monochromatic. I'm gonna reach for this eye crayon. Looks like it's also in a lavender shade. I like it, good enough. I'm gonna slap that all over my movable lid. Ooh, this one has really tiny sparks of glitter, like blue in an iridescent oyster shell-like base. Wow, that was very descriptive and very on. Yes, this doesn't feel too tacky or too greasy. Kind of light, I liked it. So I don't know if this would serve as a good base, probably a better topper than a base, but I'm gonna use it anyway. All over my movable lid, again, blend out with my finger. Boom, boom, bam. Okay, so the reason why I did that is because I really wanna try out this shimmery shade here. I just wanna stick that right on top. Gonna use my Laura Lee Los Angeles L17 brush. Pick up this shade here called Forget Me Not. Well, that didn't pick up very well, but it'll probably stick fine. All right, I'm gonna put my finger here to catch any fallout because I just don't trust it. All right, it's sticking. It's sticking and it's looking pretty nice, don't you think? I'm kind of doing this blindly because my mirror is really far away from me. Let's see if I could do that with a finger. Maybe that'll be better. Oh yeah, with the finger is where it's at. I love that. A little bit of fallout here, it's to be expected. 
but not a problem. All right, let's do the same thing here. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I like it. I like it on top of that little base moment. This is very metallic finish, almost has like a foiled effect, but I think it is lovely. Should I go to the gym with this eye makeup? I am going to the gym right afterwards, but if this turns out cute, should I remove it? Or should I be that girl at the gym? I recently started going to this fancy gym. Not even that it's fancy. It wants to be known as fancy. It kind of like leads in with being fancy. I personally think it's a crock of shit, but whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. I recently joined this fancy gym where everyone looks very fancy when they're working out, except for me. I just am not that girl. I can't actually get a good workout in if I'm wearing a cute outfit, if I have my hair looking nice. I can't, but there are girls who go in there with a full face and they look good. And so now I'm like a little intimidated. Is this the gym that you go to to look good while also somehow getting a workout in? I just, doesn't fit in my mind. How does that work? I am pleased with my eye makeup. Very, very pleased. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of depth to my outer corners. I'm gonna use the shade here called Orchid. I just need my good old Wayne Gloss brush, number 06. Dip that and just like darken it all. Darken this corner here, kind of like lift it up. Oh, maybe that's a little brighter than I was expecting. I was expecting this color to be a bit more muted, but it's actually in fact quite pink. I don't know, I'm having a lot of fun with this eyeshadow palette with all these colors here. Milani, I like this one. Who in PD is responsible for this? I need to know, because I like it. Back to the lavender shade. Just gonna blend that out, pull that out. Now this is what a wash of color is supposed to look like. This is not too vibrant. This is still very, very, very wearable. It's really nice. I like it. I like it a lot. I'm gonna go for this shade here, Fresh as a Daisy. Love that name. Pop that in. Dainty, effective. I like it. I'm gonna pop that in here too, like that, just very lightly. All right, so we've got the new Lancome Ultra Precise Waterproof Liner. Ooh, waterproof, I like that. Nice packaging. Kind of reminds me of L'Oreal. Ooh, the pen is reminding me of L'Oreal Linear Intense. Do you remember that liner from back in the day? It's one of those elongated felt tip marker types that I haven't seen in a while. So let's see. Generally, I don't like dragging these over eyeshadow, especially over metallic eyeshadow because they get contaminated and then they dry out really, really quickly. Well, I'm just gonna like minimally drag it, okay? I'm gonna just touch it, touch it, touch it, touch it in the inner portion or rather in the center. And then I'm gonna wing that out and then bring it back. That was rather effortless. All right, long comb. I like my little baby wing. I'm not gonna go any further than that. Okay, I think we're good. I like this liner, it's good stuff. All right, moving on. We've got two mascaras that I wanna test out. One is also from Lancome, and it's the same line from Idol, so Lancome Idol. It's the Lash Lifting Volumizing Mascara. They also have it in waterproof, so waterproof is what I'm going to be testing out on one eye. And then for the other eye, I have the Maybelline Sky High Cosmic Black. I was hoping this would be a waterproof formula, but it's not. Anyways, curling my lashes. Sky High on this eye. You know, I think I will go to the gym with my makeup on, and I will maybe put on one of those cute outfits that lifts and separates your butt or whatever. You know those leggings I'm talking about, the TikTok leggings. I have those. I think I might be that girl today. Just cause this makeup is just too good. I can't remove it, mm, mm All right, so now let's go for the waterproof. Lash Idol from Lancome Mascara. You know what I'm gonna say about the wand? I'm just not gonna say it. So this is a cream formula, not super thick or heavy, kind of like a clean finish, not too clumpy, but definitely not too thickening either. Even though this is supposed to be a volumizing mascara, perhaps I just don't have enough lashes to volumize. Hmm, but actually not bad. Let's try that on the lower lashes. All right, honestly, actually kind of nice, hold on. I'm getting the sense that this is a very buildable mascara. So like what Mac Stack was intending for theirs to be, but I like that it's a very clean finish. So even when you add a second coat, it doesn't look clumpy. I don't know, some people like a clumpy look. I don't mind a clumpy look, but this one is giving the volume without the clumps. It still has separation. It's like a good balance between both. Mm, I'm very pleased today. Very, very pleased. Pleased with myself. I'm pleased with a lot of these products. There was only like really one blunder. So I think so far everything is going rather well. The final product that I wanna talk about today, and it's from none other than Makeup by Mario. This is what his Zoom event was for, and this is what we have from Mario. The new Ultra Suede Cozy Lip 
creams. So this is Mario's answer to liquid lipsticks, and it's kind of like a hybrid between a traditional lipstick and a liquid lipstick that is non-transferable. This I already did try a couple of days ago, and it feels very, very comfortable on the lips. It does have a little bit of transfer, but that's not a bad thing because most lipsticks have transfer anyway. So these shades are actually based on natural shades of women from all over the world. This was his inspiration. He literally talked about it at the event, so I love Love that and because of that these natural lip shades are supposed to look natural and very flattering on actual flesh tones so today I'm gonna go for the shade pinky brown which is a top seller I already have my Charlotte Tilbury pillow talk on my lips honestly I feel like this is very similar to the color of my natural lips just like a pinch browner and then I'm gonna take the shade nude suede which is the lightest one in the collection and I believe this is one of the newer colors I'm gonna pop that right in the center All right, so that is the look. Let me go ahead and judge it. Okay, so first the skin. Outside of the forehead that I clearly messed up a little bit by layering the two bronzers. I should have just stuck with the one bronzer. I shouldn't have gone for a second dip. But outside of my forehead, I will say my skin looks pretty decent. There is a little bit of a texture enhancing right here, which you can probably tell. And that's because the blush that I used, the Iconic London Silk Glow Duo, had a little bit more than a shimmery finish. It had like some sparks, some flecks of tiny glitter. And that unfortunately emphasized my texture right here. And this texture is in pores. This is actual acne scars from when I was a teenager. So you can clearly see the roughness right here in the center of my cheeks. So that I don't love. I am not entirely pleased with it, but the color itself was really, really nice. I really did like the highlighter, which I applied here. This still looks very beaming and booming, and I don't find it to be texture enhancing or detrimental to my skin texture. So I guess I'm on the fence about this product. I like it, I don't love it. I do like the highlighter, just not completely sold on the blush just yet. I really like my under eye. I like the LYS concealers. I like them from the first time that I tried them. I just needed to get brighter shades. And now that I've gotten them, I have a feeling I will reach for them more often. This Sigma product, although I thought it to be good, I just don't see myself going that extra mile or that extra step to brighten my under eye. I can do that with just my concealer, so I don't necessarily need something underneath my concealer or like a color correcting feature. But if you're someone who struggles with dark, deep circles, maybe this is something that you will like, though I didn't find it to be super pigmented to really cover the concerns of really deep, dark circles. I really did enjoy the new Huda Beauty powder. I felt the shade was really, really smart and just really good specifically for the under eye. I wouldn't use this anywhere else, but if you actually look at the chart in the back, I'll show you a close up. It actually shows that you're only supposed to apply it under the eye, in between the eyebrows, to the nasolabial folds, and to the chin. So I think I'm going to try using this powder in that way exactly just so I can bake and brighten some of those hollows of the face. But so far, so good. I do like it. Moving on to the Milani Gilded Flora Eyeshadow Palette. I think this was clearly the star player of this video. I thoroughly enjoyed playing with these eyeshadows. I really love the color story. I think the palette is so inviting and just so springy and so perfectly on time for the season. Although these weren't the most pigmented shadows, I don't think there's always a need for super pigmented shadows, especially when we're transitioning between winter and spring. I feel like with these colors, less is more. And although I didn't try the green, that could be potentially a problematic shade. All the ones that I've tried, all the purpley tones, the shimmery, the mattes, everything just worked together so nicely. And I really, really like the look that I put together. Also, really like this new Lancome liner. I thought it was really easy to use. It reminded me of L'Oreal Linear Intense, which was one of my favorites from back in the day. Definitely gonna keep it. Definitely gonna continue using it. Maybelline Sky High. Wasn't impressed with the original, but didn't hate it. Same impression here. Let's see how it wears. If it smudges on me, then of course I'm gonna have to let it go. The Lancome Waterproof, on the other hand, is definitely proving itself. I like that it volumized my lashes. I like that you could see all of my lashes. Doesn't look super clumpy, but definitely a mascara that I will test out and try again. So far, really loving Mario's Cozy Lip Creams. They feel very, very comfortable on the lips. Kinda reminds me of those uh, K-Beauty formulations, something that feels very velvety on the lips. Not necessarily transfer proof, but 
still does provide some longevity. With that said, these are my first impressions. Everything that I've tried so far was really on the better side. I feel like this was a really positive testing new makeup video. Everything that has come in for the month of March has been really good, really above average, I will say. So with that, I am going to zoom on out. I'm gonna wish you guys a farewell and I will see you in my next video. All right, I love you guys. Peace out.